What up, though, everybody? This is Kyle, and you are listening to Knockouts and Three Counts. Uh, in studio with me, we got Kev with me, and I'm thinking Tony's going to be giving a, giving a call in here in a little bit. Devin's uh, kind of laying on, getting the lay of the land in Texas and uh, figuring out what he's going to be doing down there. But, uh, Kev, why don't you throw out your social media and let everybody know where they can find you? On Facebook, it's Kevin D. Russ. Um, on Instagram is underscore underscore main the eighties. On Twitter is underscore underscore main the eighties. His mother must still love him because his his social medias are still the same. Yes, definitely. It's like a new world record. Yeah, um, two years. <laughs> right. <laughs> but you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Detroit Knockout at Detroit N O K O U T. Um Make sure you're following the page at Knockouts and Three Counts Podcast on Facebook, Knockouts and Three Counts on YouTube, at KO3C Pod on Twitter and Instagram, and uh, at KO3C Pod.com. You can see all of our episodes. Um, Kev, we got quite the weekend to jump into, huh? Yes, yes, yes. So, where do you want to start? You want to start with Starcast? You want to start with All Out? We just start with Starcast. So, first of all, um, as we announced on our page a little bit, a bit ago, and if you pay attention to our social media, um, we did get credentials for that event, so we have access to all the panels, the party with Joey Janela, CM Punk, John Moxley, all that. So uh, a lot of stuff to a lot of stuff to get into. Um, Kev, out of the ones that they've announced, uh, what's uh, one of the panels you think is either going to be a sleeper or one that you're looking forward to hearing what they got to say? I think the. The wrestling with stereotypes could be the one that's gonna be the sleeper. Like I really think that like, you go you go see you go see some unexpected see in there in that one. So it's funny that you name that one right off the rip because uh, Andreas and Kel are friends of the show. Um, I've already been in contact with them. We're gonna be doing an interview with them, and uh, we met with Big Swole um, at the uh, Shine Show. Okay. So she's going to sit down and do an interview with us, Kel and uh, Andreas, and uh, that will be on our YouTube channel, uh, Facebook, all of our usual social medias and stuff. So be on the lookout, man. We're going to have all the best content. You know, we have uh, we have access to all the panels, and with that access, we're going to be able to be bringing you uh, the best interviews. So that's definitely one that I personally look forward to, um, A, to show love to Kel and them, but... Also, as we've mentioned before on the show, with my health, I get the whole stereotype. Thing. Right. So I, I'm looking forward to that one. Um, for me, I think one that might be a little bit underrated is uh, I am interested to see what's going to happen with the Malenko one. Okay. Oh, yeah, because he just left. He just left there, yeah. and now he's with AEW, and, you know, I mean uh, – what are what are some things that you want to hear from the Malenko one, or do you have any questions that you would personally want to ask him? Like, I I probably ask him what was his what what was his like what was his, what was his mindset to ask for his release, like like where was he at to just say I want to release and go join AEW. And then you got to wonder was AEW kind of already in the in his head, right? Was that already kind of like yeah. in the works and it just was something that nobody knew, um. For me, I guess my question is going to be around the same line. Uh, just in that, for him to just go straight from WWE to then go to AEW is uh, quite the jump, man. Yeah, so it's a bold move, right? So I'd like to hear what goes into that. You know, I'd like to hear some of the stories he's probably got that are going to come out about his time in WWE and. Uh, like I said, that one, uh, that one, that one's gonna be really. <laughs> it's gonna be interesting. I don't even, uh, I don't even know what to say on that one. But uh, <laughs> uh, for those of you that can't see what we're laughing about, it goes down in the group chats. Yeah. Uh, but um, the other ones that we obviously got to look at, um, I'm really excited to go check out the CM Punk one. Yeah, of um, course. That one's going to be one that I'm definitely, I want to hear everything he's got to say, uh, especially with it being the first time he's spoken in, what, five years? Yeah. You know, in a wrestling forum. So I'm sure he's going to get all the questions, to be honest with you, though, like yeah, as far he, as he questions. He's not going to answer them all. Oh, no, he's not. <laughs> and then 
Well, and so here's the thing. Because everybody's going to be asking him so much about wrestling, I feel like I want to ask him about MMA. Of course. You got to. I want to ask him about MMA because, like, everybody's going to be asking him about wrestling. Ask him about AJ. <laughs> nah, I'm not going to go there. No. Because <laughs> he strikes me as the guy that might get a little testy about yeah, that kind of yeah. shit. So, no, I'm going to – I want to know uh, – uh, I want to know. Really, Randy? <laughs> <laughs> I want to know what's going on uh, as far as, you know, do we see him wrestle again? Is he going to stick to doing commentary with MMA? Is well, he is he looking to fight again? Is he going to just continue to do running and so, uh, go to sleep and running out? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if he actually cops to that. Right. Uh, what do you think about the Moxley thing, though, bro? Well, you talk about what's going on with him now? Well, he's got MRSA and yeah. all that, and it's, now it's, who it's, knows it's, if it's he's bad. actually going to be. Really, it's really bad timing for him. Like, like he was gone for, what, six months in WWE? When he's in WWE, nine months? Yeah. He was gone for nine months and came back, had a, a horrible heel turn, and then he left. So the, he, same thing going to win right now. Well, I mean, that's not his. I mean, the MRSA thing. Well, well I'm saying he can't. I guess can't. it is, but. but I mean, I guess it is, but I mean, at the same time, what I mean is, like, they didn't know that was going to happen, but then here's the thing. You've hyped this panel. Yeah. What happens if, so now what? Are you going to have him come talk? I hope he does, because I hope we can still get him. Yeah, he, he but, should. But, you know, we'll see what happens. I mean, and we were talking about this on the way over, and we'll get more into it once we get to uh, All Out and all that kind of stuff. Um I'm looking really forward to seeing just what comes out of those. Because something tells me that, I mean, Punk's got to know that everybody's going to ask him. Yeah, of course they, of course you he know, does. You know, he knows what he's getting into, okay? so Maybe he's ready to talk about it now. You know, I could be off base, but I wouldn't be shocked if because the MMA thing, you know, has kind of run its course at this point, at least as it seems. And who knows that he doesn't try to come back to wrestling. Yeah. Because well, somebody, well, who was it? Somebody was telling me that there was rumor or something to be said that WWE had called CM Punk. Nah, I didn't hear about that one. So, um, like I said, I'm, I'm interested to see what's going to come out of that. And then, like, the other thing is, I'm looking forward to Janela Palooza. <laughs> oh man! Holy God! That's See, the thing is, I don't know what to expect out of Janela. So, but then they got Tone Loke doing uh, special MCing. music. Yeah, yeah. So um, that's bro. That's um, gonna be interesting. The, the tales of a hardcore legend. Mick Foley got some stories to tell, and that's a dream interview for man, me. Yeah, so, because, Lord willing, dude, with those media credentials, hopefully we'll be able to bring him to you here on the show. Yes. He's definitely somebody I'm looking forward to. Uh I definitely want to know some things as far as the original Hell in a Cell like well, like for for instance, like I know he's he said he's afraid of heights, but he still went up there anyway. Like for you to even do that, that's it took balls. Look, I think he went into that fully knowing. He's, look, dude, this is gonna hurt, but it's gonna leave me a big, uh, a big impact. And then, not to mention, so here's the other thing. And I've said it before: if we ever get to, uh, if we ever get to um, um, interview Noel Foley, I have to ask: like, what was that like for you, watching as a child to watch that? And yeah. like, what are your thoughts on it now? Now that you're older, like. Uh, I would love to hear stuff like that. Uh, I want to hear about some of his time at ECW and I, like I, I like to hear yeah the, the whole uh, Kane Dewey thing right. And I would I like to hear about his time as a commissioner. It seems like he's having a lot of fun. I want to know his thoughts on his most recent run. Yeah, it was yeah. So was, I mean, there's plenty. Here. <laughs> there's plenty of things that I could ask him, and so I'm I'm really looking forward to that one and hoping that. Uh, you know, it, it lines up that we can get some footage with him as well. Uh, all in all, man, StarCast, StarCast has got quite a few cool panels. Uh, like I said, we've got access to all of them. Um, I personally won't be able to get in until Friday morning, so I won't be there for uh, Undeniable to Desirable. 
uh, with Cody Rhodes. That's the one that I'm really bummed about because Cody's somebody I'd love to get on the show. Just uh, like I said, to me, he's been one of the most interesting stories ever since he left WWE. And I mean, the the guy's been hot, and but, now you've got AEW and all this. So I feel like you're gonna get some really cool stuff out of that one but, too. But think about this: you might get a, you might get an interview with Brandy, or the women that are AEW, or Britt Baker. Say that again. Britt Baker or Brandy. Right, but I mean, wait a minute. Make that Britt Baker or Brandy with the women women of AEW. Right. So you might get a chance to get an interview with either one of them. Oh sure, I I definitely want to get an interview with them too. I was like, wait a minute, what does that got to do with the I'm Cody? Saying, thing? I'm saying like, because if you can't get one rose, get the other one. Hey man, I <laughs> dude, I'm just hoping that we can get good content because like you know what, I you know we're gonna come back with some pretty cool stuff. Of course. And uh, I just want to take in the experience and enjoy it. It was kind of crazy. We got to sit in on the. The conference call. Uh, conference call with uh, Conrad and Sports Illustrated and ESPN and PWI Insider and all that. And uh, so, you know, it's cool to even, you know, be involved with any of this stuff. And, uh, you know, you've got Ring of Honor coming up and so many so many big things, man. So it's it's a great time to be in wrestling right now, yes. bro. Like, look at everything you've got going on. you got Ring of Honor. you got NWA. You've got... Evolved, you've got Shine, you've got WWE, NXT. But you know. it's, 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 it's even a greater time to be a fan at the moment. No, man. It, man, it's, it's just so much. Like, like me personally, I like the fact that I got choices of what, what I want to watch. Different oh, yeah, choices. dude. Like, that's like, the thing. That's, it's not just one thing and that's it. So yeah, As a kid, when we, we had, what, three choices? We had either WCW, WWE, or ECW. And ECW is sparingly. So it was like. So let's talk about the elephant in the room since you brought it up. So okay. obviously we're talking about uh, things that are on TV. What do you think with NXT going to uh, NXT going to two hours I, and on USA? I, I, I've been predicting this for two years, but I didn't. I two I years think ago everybody knew but, eventually it was going to happen. But though. two years ago I didn't expect AEW. Right, but I don't know, man. My only worry with it going to USA. On one hand, like on a surface level, two hours of NXT would be great. But if it gets to be something to where it becomes so produced, like Raw and SmackDown do now that, you know. Well, that's that's why they try to incorporate 205 into the NXT roster instead of having 205 as its own show, which would, be, make, which would make more sense. I mean, like I said, I think NXT is great. I just hope that it doesn't take away from the product once it goes to, yeah. you know, USA. And I hope it's not something where Vince tries to start changing oh, everything. No. That, I mean, and I hate to say that because I'm not one of those guys that's like, oh, Vince is this and that and the but, other. But, but Vince, that does scare me a little Vince, bit because there's such ne- a stark Vince contrast. never had his hand into NXT. So when they, get, when they go to uh, get a major uh, primetime spot, he might want to put his hand in there. And, and Devin once said, Vince, stay away from my NXT. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, though. <laughs> but we've talked about the one half of the Wednesday Night Wars. Um, what do you think about the other half? So we've got All Out that's this weekend. You've got... Uh, take over Carn- Carnath, Carn- uh, Cardiff. Take over Cardiff, but let's get into All Out first. Okay. So you've got... Um, let's see. Let me get the... Live feed open. There you go. Anyways, so uh, yeah, man, you've got to start. You've got um, Kenny Omega. They just what? I'm just trying to get that. Kenny Omega just they announced that he's going to be, you know, now facing Pac. Okay, Master Pac. <laughs> the idea of seeing Pac in AEW, I think, is great. Because you're gonna get to see Pac how Pac should have been, you know, when he was doing the heel run in WWE. Yeah. But they didn't never let it really get off. See, but my problem with this is that I understand they were in they they were in a bind. Nobody knew that, you know, Moxley was gonna have the problem with MRSA right. and all that. But dude, that like that match had a build to it and all it, that. It so did. That's my thing. Like, I'm somebody that as I'm getting older, there's more for me to be said about um, 
there's more for me to be said about the the build that goes into a match because that's what makes me care. Or, or I said it's just a replacement match. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like it's a damn good. Repl- I mean, if it's a replacement match, it's pretty damn good right. replacement match. But I mean, you know. So let's start with that one. Who do you got, Pac or Kenny? See, with this being Pac's first match in AEW, because the first the first match he's supposed to have never happened. Yeah, I have to say Kenny. Just because, because who knows if Pac is at, will actually stay there. I think Kenny's going to... I feel like Kenny's going to win, but also with the way that things went with Hangman, I could also kind of see it to be where they have some kind of screwy bullshit so, finish, though. Because so. you don't want to... You don't want to... I mean... To have Pac come in and just lose right away? Yeah, true. Kenny already won- lost one match already. So. Kenny can't Kenny can't lose another match, man. Yeah. Like, Kenny don't need to go lose in another match. That's not what I'm saying. But it just makes this one awkward. But, again, it also adds intrigue because you don't know what the hell is going to happen. Right. What match you want to go at next, brother man? Uh, let's, go, let's go for the tag team match, which is actually the match I'm more excited about. Which okay. will be the best friends versus the Dark Order. Okay. And who do you got and why? And what makes you excited about the match? Man, because I I, I, I like the Smash Brothers. I like them. I like them. Really, really. like, And I like the new gimmick, the gimmick they got. But I got them going all the way to become the new AEW Tag Team Champions. And I, 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 really, I really like, like, I like the best friends because I'm, I'm a fan of Beretta and Trent. Trent, and Trent, Trent, Beretta, and Listen, Trent. Yeah, Beretta is whatever. Trent. Uh, Chucky, <laughs> Chucky T and Beretta, and I think it's gonna be an awesome match. I, man, you know, the best friends have been underrated for a real long time. There's no arguing that. Uh, but I have to say, I'm really kind of intrigued with the Dark Order. Um, I didn't know what the hell to think the first time when they all came out like that. I'm like, what in the fuck? <laughs> what are you doing? Like, and then as I started to see it, it's still not, I'm not going to say they're like my favorite tag team, but it's got me interested. Yeah. But uh, if I got to pick one, I think best friends are the better team, but I'm going to go with oh, the Dark Order. The best, the best friends are a better team, but the Dark Order is being pushed really heavy right now. And I, I'm going to just put this out there. The best friends has the best tr- uh, trying package I've seen <laughs> since AD start, <laughs> AEW started. <laughs> they had aliens, teddy bears, and goats in a video package. <laughs> Tony Thunder, call in. I see you're watching. <laughs> <laughs> right. You, wow. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yo. Yo. Tony yo. Thunder's in the building. Give me your social medias real quick. Yo, that's me. That's Tony Thunder um, on on Twitter at Cowboy Hat, on Twitter at Cowboy Hat, and on Facebook at Pink Cowboy Hat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So there's that. But uh, <laughs> So we had just started to get into All Out, and uh, we went over the Kenny and uh, Pac match. Uh, what's, what's your quick thoughts on that, and who do you got? Man, um... It's crazy what happened to Moshley, man. Um, sad to hear. Hopefully he gets back in uh, back in good condition, back in shape soon to get everything worked out with his elbow. But um, that's a tough one, man. But I, I mean, at, at this point, can you really bet against Kenny Omega? Yeah, and that's and Kev brought up a good point with that too. Like, my first initial thought is like, man, what do you do with this one? Because now you're bringing Pac in. Do you want him to lose in his first match? But then I thought about it. Well, Kenny's already lost, too, so he can't take too many more losses, too. And since it's a throw-in like that, to me, it kind of makes it a little more intriguing. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, it's definitely a match of, who, you know, who's who's taking this, man, because uh, they both could use the momentum. I mean, as you know, you, you heard him say Omega. wins and losses are supposed to matter in here. So yeah. I mean, yeah, a win I mean, for either guy is big. K- Kenny is the best bout machine. Can't lose too many matches. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. 
So I think we're all on the same page with that one. Uh, we the next match we went over was uh, the Dark Order versus Best Friends. Who you got? I got the Best Friends, man. Sexy Chucky e. T is my guy. I'm big a big fan of his for a long time, and uh, him and Trent teaming up is just one of the best things going on in, in indie wrestling right now, in pro wrestling in general. So I'm the only one that took the Dark Order, huh? I took the Dark Order. You did. Okay, so yeah. Tony's Tony's the lone wolf on this one. So. Shout out to our sponsor, Matt Stransky, who's in uh, watching in the uh, feed right now. I see you. Uh, but, Yo, uh, what up, Matt? What's what up, on, man? Matt? Um, next match we should go into. You were talking about tag teams. Well, why don't we just get into the ladder match? Uh, you've got the Lucha Brothers versus um, the Young Bucks. They're running it back again. And I don't know about you match guys. number four. <laughs> but holy shit, this match has got fireworks written all over it. Like this definitely, sure. this is definitely out of everything on the card is either top one or top two matches that I'm looking forward to. Uh, as far as this card, uh, for me, man, I think they're gonna pull out all the stops. It's it's gonna be insane. Yeah. Uh, twenty bucks says Melter gives it five stars. Uh, stars, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with the young bucks. You know what? This is going to be a car crash, and it's going to be awesome. And I'm also going with the Young Bucks just because the Lucha Brothers, the Lucha Brothers uh, threw out the match, so the Bucks got to win. <laughs> That's like in the wrestling, you pull out the table, you the one going through it. <laughs> <laughs> so who you got, Tony? You know, when I first <clears throat> when I, when I first started uh, wrestling out on the West Coast, um, I heard about Ray Horse and the Lucha Brothers. Everybody was saying, yo, the Lucha Brothers are like, they're like the, the, the Lucha version of the Young Bucks. And that's what they were compared to everybody who I talked to about the Lucha Brothers. They compared them to being the Lucha Young Bucks. So this match is definitely going to be, I mean, for those who've seen them work before, you, you know you know what to expect. But me personally, I'm going to go with the Lucha Brothers on this one, man. Okay. Any specific reason? I'm, I'm, I'm going... I'm I'm going to, I'm going the Kevin Russ route and uh, <laughs> you know I'm going the Kevin Russ route. <laughs> so since it's the next one that just popped up on the screen, I'll go back to back with these two because these are when I said those two were the top two I was looking forward to. These ones are probably the other ones. So the next match we should look into is going to be Darby Allen versus Joey Janela versus Jimmy Havoc. That match is gonna be a fucking car crash, man. man. <laughs> man. Somebody's going to the hospital. <laughs> Somebody? How about they're all gonna go to the hospital, <laughs> dude? Jimmy Havoc. I'm gonna uh, go with Janela on this one, man. Okay. Nice. Okay. And I'm going to go with Darby Allen. Darby Allen. I think. I think it's gonna be. I think I'm gonna go with Tony on this one. I, I think Janella. I think Janella's got to get him some back, dude. Oh, yeah. So yeah, yeah. At, at, yeah. After that Lego thing, it was over. <laughs> I, I I think I think Janella's got to get him some back. But since we didn't talk about it when we were talking about the panels, let's talk about the official all out party that Joey Janella is gonna have that we're gonna be at with Tone Loke is doing the fucking MC for that. That's gonna be insane. Uh, Lucky Cole McAdoo. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, they got they got so much like crazy different stuff. Like Tony, was there any of the panel? Well, the, the, the crazy, um, you know, the crazy thing about uh, that party is that <clears throat> Enzo was invited. So, uh, no, I'm joking. I'm joking. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are there? Question? I was gonna say, are there any of the? Uh, are there any of the panels, like in specific, that you are looking most forward to, and are there any questions that you would wa- are you wanting to ask to them? Not necessarily. I mean, I really haven't looked into the panels and you so, know what's, what's going on as far as Starcast. So but, the main ones we got uh, are you got CM Punk, you've got Malenko. Yeah, I, mean, that's the, I, I know the obvious ones, like the big ones you know what i mean and then we're doing something with the stereotype uh wrestling with stereotypes uh panel we're going to do an interview with uh cal and andreas and then uh big swole too so we'll be there for that one too uh but i'm really looking forward to uh, we talked about the malenko one um 
I think Malenko's could be good. You still got Moxley. You've still got obviously Foley. you've got Punk. You've got Foley's Foley. one. Foley's is going to be the, pretty the, good. Women of AEW. Women of AEW. Um, what else was it? Uh, uh, you got Undeniable to Desirable with Cody. Um, let's see. Tony Schiavone's got one, and then. Oh, Those are oh, most the li- of the, the main lifestyles, ones. The lifestyles. The lifestyles. Uh, you know, obviously, obviously, Punk is going to get all the wrestling questions in the world. So, you know, that, that's that's really nothing that you can ask him. Punk that probably won't get asked but already with him. That's being why there. Kyle got to step out the box and ask an MMA question. I, that's what I planned on. <laughs> yeah. That's the first thing I said when I heard what we were going to do. That I was like, my question's got to be MMA related. Right. Any thoughts on any of the other but, panels I name? Um, me personally, man, if I could pick Dean Malenko's brain, that would be the panel that I would go to personally. Because, That's the first I mean, one I'm going to. Fucking Dean Malenko. I mean, goddamn. <laughs> Plus, think what about you, this. You like, He's Dean Malenko. Not to mention, think about... A man of a thousand holds. Think about... And none of them are arm bars. <laughs> Were they the three <laughs> the three family grenundle? <laughs> three... Yeah. <laughs> but, uh... You know, the cool thing with Malenko, too, you got to remember, I mean, he just left WWE, you know, from being on creative with them and an agent and things like that, you know, and then he goes straight to AEW. I mean, that's, that's, I mean, there's a lot to dive into with that. So uh, that's definitely one that I'm interested in, and that's actually the first one I'm going to uh, when I get there Friday. Um, Back to the card, you know, we went through Darby Allen and uh, Jimmy Havoc's match. You've got after that one that I'm I'm interested in, and again, as we talked about, of why I was kind of bummed yeah. the Moxley match isn't happening because there was actually a build up to that. True. That same applies to why I'm excited for this match: uh, Cody Rhodes versus Sean Spears with Tully Blanchard in his corner. Hey, and congratulations, to Sean Spears just got married. Hey, that's what's up, man. But uh, what have you watched? Have you guys watched uh, the uh, Road to All Out stuff and seen what they've been doing with uh, Tully and Sean? I don't know. If Tony's there. Kevin, what about you? Like, I, I think Blanchard was a good, like a good, a good piece to put with Sean. Like, I'm not sure how his uh promo skills is, so Blanchard was a good person to put with him. I like the fact that they haven't revealed everything, right? Right. And at first, it took me a minute because I'm thinking, Tully Blanchard? Like, really? And then I thought about it, and I'm like, dude, he had a dog-ass feud with uh, Dusty. True. So. Makes sense. If anyone knows how to beat a Rhodes. Makes sense. You know, so I think it uh, it it adds instant credibility uh for Sean Spears to have Tully Blanchard's endorsement, uh, I don't know. I don't know if this is going to be a one and done or where they go with this one, but I think this could be one that steals the show because I feel like there will be a lot of theatrics in it. True. Um, for me, I'm going to go Cody on this one. I'm going to have to go Sean. Why so? Because, like, with him, like, I feel like the heel have to go over sometimes. And, I agree. And and with it, with this feud, it, the way the way he started off the feud, he got to finish off hot. He, he started hot, he got to finish hot. I mean, like I said, that's definitely one that I'm looking forward to. What else do we got on this card? The 21. Let's see. Uh, we've got a match that they just announced yesterday. You've got Luchasaurus, Jungle Boy, and Marco Stunt versus SoCal Uncensored. That's going to be Christopher Daniels, Frankie Kazarian, Scorpio Sky. SCU? SCU. Yep. I'm uh, definitely looking forward to that one. Uh, <laughs> the videos that they do with Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus oh, are Marco. just fucking awesome. And, and, and Marco Stunt as, with a leash on. Dude. <laughs> it's so funny, though. But that little bastard will get up there and fly yeah, off man, anything. He would. <laughs> I don't know, man. That one's going to be a fun match. I feel like there's going to be a lot of funny shit in that match. Uh, I think that's definitely going to be... A- a match that is definitely going to keep the crowd uh, entertained. That might not be the match that you're going to watch for like the most great wrestling. Although all the guys in that match can wrestle, but 
for for some nice hot spots, that's the best match to have other than the uh, leather match. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm looking forward to that one. Uh, that one I think probably could be a match you uh, might see. On this past episode of uh, being the elite, it, uh, Luchasaurus had Jungle Boy on his shoulders, and Jungle Boy had Marco Stunt on his shoulders. I saw it. Yeah. Then they and they had uh, what's his name? Um, John John Morrison. And, yeah, uh, yeah, Taya and, Taya. and Prince Presley. Yeah. Man, <laughs> Hold on, I they saw crazy. that. So let's see. We've got a uh, private party versus and Helico and Jack Evans. Private party. That's got fucking fire written it, all it, over it, 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 though. It do like I like Jack Evans and uh, and Helico, but private party. I think private party's gonna win. That they, one. they 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 go. I win. think they're trying to build them up. They, they go. There's gonna be them eventually. Them and the young bucks gonna actually have that match in the AEW. So you got the 21 woman casino battle royal. Uh, they just announced you've got Eva Lise, you've got uh, Britt Baker, you've got. All the names that we know and the ones that we don't yet. Uh, you've got Kong. You got Awesome Kong's going to be in there. Aja Kong. I heard Aja Kong's out. Oh. Mm. Um, but that match is going to be interesting. Do you got any thoughts on who you think might be the person to get the, you know, the women's title shot? Kaylee Ray. Kylie Ray. Huh? Kylie Ray, whatever her name is. I was going to say. Yeah. Wrong it's, company. It's going to be. Her. <laughs> uh, yeah. You think it's Kylie Ray, huh? Yeah, like she she's that she's that Bailey character that they want to reach for. So she's going to get the title shot. She's not going to win, but she's going to get the title shot. <laughs> I'm trying to think of who I got. Um, Brandy a surprise entrance. <laughs> it's not a surprise. You know, Brandy's going to be in there. Um. If I gotta pick one, I'm gonna go Nyla Rose. That's a good pick, but uh I'm gonna go Britt Baker. Mrs. Adam Cole. <laughs> what do you think about the three picks that they added uh this couple weeks ago? You know, you've got uh Eva Lise is coming in. We just saw her this past weekend here mm-hmm. in Michigan in a great match against Mercedes Martinez in okay. Detroit's own Pinkies up, AK. Uh but You've got her. You've got Jazz is going to be in it. Yeah, I like that. Allison K. Where do you come from? <laughs> <laughs> and this guy just totally drops out. But Allison K. I, I heard like, it. I like the oh, promo. Yeah. I like the promo they did for Jazz to introduce her. I like be- that. Tony, you got any pick uh, for the twenty-one woman uh, women's battle royal? Uh. I don't know, man. That's really a toss up. That's that's kind of like you know the Andre or the Mula Battle Royal. Like, I agree. Can't really the call Mula. it. Anymore. Plus, you don't know all who's in it. The other match we went over while you were on hiatus, we went and uh, Why you talked about <laughs> word of the day. Hiatus quintessential. <laughs> Without Kyle. <laughs> yeah, we can't put those on the screen no more because Facebook said that uh, it's too much text on the screen. <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Only for the frame or the uh, key key image. Ah, uh, gotcha. So the we were talking about Cody Rhodes versus Sean Spears with Tully Blanchard. First of all, what are your thoughts on them putting Tully Blanchard with Sean Spears, and do you think that it adds instant credibility? I mean, um, I think the way they're running with the story is 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 to me it's, it's dope. You know, it's um. It's something you want to keep your eye on. You know, they're trying to get as many eyeballs as they can before the weekly show start. And the main storylines are, are, you know, very interesting. So um, I'm personally I'm personally leaning towards Cody, but you never know. It kind of seems like he might lose this one to get help himself. What do you think about uh... – what do you think about the whole Tully Blanchard thing? What do you think on the pick to put Tully with him? And how do you think it's played out so far? Uh, I mean, so far I like it. You know, I'm not the kind of guy to jump to conclusions. Like, you know, a lot of people got the shit face and pie in their face or egg on their right. face, whatever you want to call it, when it comes to the Bray Wyatt character uh, with the theme. So, you know, you just got to give things time to develop sometimes. So far, I like it. I agree. To me, at first I was like, why Tully Blanchard? But then when I thought about it, I'm like, dude, he had such a dope feud with Dusty. 
Yeah. It's a great person to pick because you can say, well, if anybody it's, knows how to beat a Rhodes, it's brilliant. It's Tully Blanchard. So I, yeah. I like it, and I like the way that they cut off Jr. like that. So I, I, I'm really interested to see what happens with that one. Who knows? Maybe we can get uh, Mr. Spears on the show to like, talk about it in Chicago. That's like with Charlotte. Who who nope. beats a heart? They put his father with him. <laughs> I I mean you're right, and I can't even I can't even argue that. Um, let's see, what do we got next on the card? We also went over Private Party versus Angelico and Jack Evans. Who you got? Man, that boy Angelico can man if he can't flip. <laughs> I'm gonna go with the Private Party though, man. We I think that was a clean sweep for us on that one. Yeah. Let's see. Um, let's see what we already did that match. Did that match. Well, it looks like the last match we got left is El Grand Champion. We've got uh, who's going to be the first AEW champion? We've got the Hangman Adam Page versus Chris Jericho. The GOAT. So there's so much to unpack on this. First of all, yeah. First of all, what do you think? And I think it's fucking brilliant, first of all. What do you guys think of Jericho's promos leading into this? And the reason I ask is if you watched the most recent episode of The Road to uh, All Out, Jericho cuts about a minute and a half pro like a minute and a half promo about how if he loses this match, then it's essentially the beginning of the death of Chris Jericho. The legend of Chris Jericho. Right. Yeah. And he was making it evidently clear. He's why he <laughs> needs to win this match. But so, he, show, he showed it. But it shows why Jericho's so good. Yeah. He makes yeah. you believe, bro, like I have to win this shit. Because if I don't, it's over for me. Right. You know what I'm saying? And That's so right. and for him to say, look, this is the the beginning of the end of my career, I mean that's saying something. Uh and I think this is gonna I mean, be I'll, say it going. Ever since he came back after the GP yoga and said like he was rejuvenated. I knew after a while this time would come, and it has been that good while. Um, but at this point, you kind of got to look at AEW. And what are they going to do? Are they going to try to put prestige with the title with Jericho, or are they going to actually stand there and say, we're go- looking to the future, we are the future, we're going with the future, and actually put the title on page? Um, either way, it's a great choice. Uh, me personally, the way they've been gearing towards being the wrestling promotion of the future – I would think that they were going towards Hangman. So for me, even though I think it wouldn't be a bad move to put the title on Jericho, just the way it's being set up, something tells me that they're going to have Jericho put Hangman over. Oh, yeah, in this oh yeah. Jericho definitely about to give uh, Hangman the rub. <laughs> I think that pretty much, uh, <laughs> that pretty much uh, sums that up. It's going to be yeah. an awesome match. And uh, before we get into the rest of what's going on surrounding this weekend and the impact it's going to have on the wrestling business, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, our sponsor, Matt Stransky, was in here watching with us. And if, oh. you're, and if you're in the market for a new home, Stransky & Company is where you need to go. You can find them on get Instagram. Get house. Exactly, man. Like, this dude just posted another listing. If you look in our uh, show's story. No, see, no, 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 like, like, we got to tell the people that they don't sell houses. They give you homes. Right. It's a home. A I mean, they don't you give it to you. You still have to pay for it. Nothing's <laughs> <laughs> free. Luther Vandross, excuse me, Randy. Luther Vandross said a chair is not a chair unless somebody's sitting there. A home is not a home. Look, man. <laughs> a house is not a home. Unless you get it. I just need, <laughs> all I need you guys to do is just go look at our show story. Look at the house, bro. They show you all the rooms in the house. That house is dope. But Stransky and, Com- Stransky and Company is a top producing real estate team specializing in an individual strategy, over the top service, and continued success for their clients. They're the real estate easy bucket button. As we said, if you're looking to buy, sell, invest, call them at 248-563-9449 or email them at admin at stranskyandcompany.com. And like I said, follow them on their social medias. But seriously, man, we wouldn't have brought these guys. He wasn't reading that. That was from the heart. You know, I mean, I'm just trying to give you all the information. But for real, though, if we with them being our first sponsor, man, got to put it all in. 
like I said, they have stepped up the plate, helped us out. If you're a fan of the show, man, help our sponsors. And, I mean, we wouldn't have brought these guys on here if we didn't believe in them. Right. So, like I said, for go sure. check their stuff out, man. And uh, I promise you, if you Spread get a – Even if you're not looking for a house, right. you can share it. Somebody Just you know show might some be love. Hot house. damn. So, I mean, seriously, is. though. Absolutely. But, uh, you know, now that we've went through All Out and all that stuff, what do you think – where do you think uh, we are with the wrestling business right now? And I'm going to put context behind that question. So it's also been announced now that NXT is going to go to two hours on Wednesday on USA. Yeah. And they're going to go head to head with all, uh, not all out. Yeah, all elite. Tuesday night. That's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's when, it's the Wednesday know. night wars, oh, don't I? Right. You know, <laughs> I can't talk today. I'm good. <laughs> Uh, but uh, <laughs> all out wrestling, <laughs> all out wrestling. <laughs> but uh, what are your what are your thoughts on NXT's move to uh, USA? And do you think do you think it raises any red flags as far as you know maybe Vince having a little bit more of a hand to it? Let me tell you this, man. Vince McMahon don't give a shit about AEW. Okay, Vince McMahon is a, a billionaire, and he's like getting ready to start the XFL. The AEW is probably not even on his radar. But what a time to be alive. If you are a wrestling fan, this is the greatest thing that has happened to us since the Monday Night Wars, since the Attitude Era. Since you know, even the- though I'm, I'm not the biggest <laughs> fan of what people think the Attitude Era was, you know, that's just, I'm not going there. But at the end of the day, man, this is, this is huge. This is big for wrestling. This is big for all of us. And it's, it's the start of something great, man. I mean, it opens the market. It, it brings in fans from the indies who don't watch TV wrestling, so to speak, to come and enjoy the experience of NXT and AEW to, to get that feel good feeling of having the remote in your hand and just hitting the last button, you know, at any given moment to see what's going on. That feeling is back. Like what is there not to love about this? I, I can't argue that fact at all. As far as uh, the content, my only question I think, and I would say, is the real question for AEW coming out of All Out and heading into TV is are they ready? we All Out wrestling? <sighs> Thing is, are, are they ready? Well, that's what I'm getting at, you know, because when you look at like Fighter Fest and you look at Fight for the Fallen, there were definitely great matches, but then there were other ones where you were just kind of like, what the fuck? It was a little. But nice. again, they're a new company, so the question is, what do you guys think? How do you think they're gonna fare when they get to weekly TV? Kev, what about I'm you? I'm saying it's going to be a little bumpy at first, but eventually they're going to get their stride. By the end of the year, they, you could be like, okay, I'm not watching this. I'm going to watch this. You're you going you go to have your choice. I'm going to watch AEW or watch NXT. So you think people are going to make that switch and choose AEW? Of, huh? of course, because then WCW went for 83 what are you, weeks. No, 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 no. <laughs> people let me, chose let me, WCW let me over WWE. Mr. Uh, Mr. Kev, um, let, me tell you, let me tell you something, man. Uh, if you think, that the millions and millions upon millions of wrestling fans who don't even know that AEW exists is going to check it out on a random Wednesday and say, fuck WWE, this is it. But you got to think about smoking, it. smoking, bro. You got to think about it. Um, so, no, 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 no. We know, you got you to think about this, bro. Go ahead. Look, we watch NXT, but there's a lot of people that don't even watch NXT, but they are WWE fans, only watch the main roster. So with NXT coming through, they got two shows they never even seen. On both, they go they go pick and choose what they're going to watch off rip. Well, you gotta you gotta look at it like this: WWE got a production team behind them that is gonna make AEW look like weird. Like even if you looked at WCW and WWE back in the day, the WWE just had of a more live raw "you're there" type of feeling. Like when the music hits, you hear it with great crisp clear sounds. There's not that weird echo in the back. They actually lay the track on top of the audio so you hear the music, the, the commentary is on point, the, the camera angles, the, the crowd reaction is louder. They enhance that so you hear it. Like, AEW don't got all those things down so, packed yet. So At least I don't think. At how, least from the... the how, how long was... Pay-per-views and... How long was that? WCW on, the, uh, on air? How long about, was WCW? About seven years? About seven years on Are you talking about Nitro or WCW Nitro. as a whole? Nitro. So they about seven years. So you saying about about ten years? Vince would probably say, "Oh, Triple H is owned by AEW." <laughs> I don't know, man. 
I don't think Vince, like I said, I don't think AEW is on Vince's radar. I mean, like, no, like, one either, though. We, like you got to think, we as wrestling fans, like the, the so-called uh, insiders that know the business and watch the indies and actually look at professional wrestling outside of the WWE, we're a small target audience. It, it's not like WWE gets three to four million views every week, and that's considered low. That's considered they're dying. Three to four million a week is considered they're dying versus when Impact had their first run against WWE on a Monday, and that was their biggest episode with the most viewers, oh, yeah, and it was only 1.4 million. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, question. When you was in Florida a few weeks ago, did you stop at, the PC, did you stop at the PC or, or the Impact Zone? <laughs> the PC well, I mean, or the uh, Impact Zone? <laughs> I, I stopped at uh I stopped by Rhea Smash Cakes and got some cupcakes made by Maria Bowden and they were delicious. They were the best. Check her out on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter at Rhea Smash Cakes. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and get you a house. Get you a house. <laughs> or find somebody who wants a house and share it. So, what are your guys' thoughts on uh, WWE running the NXT UK Takeover Day of? all out and how do you think it's gonna fare I, i'm not sure about that one I, you know what at this point i start to get the idea of wait maybe they're really trying to go at aew it's not wwe versus aew it's really like nxt versus aew i and, agree and to me that battle is is, is a better fight because it's, it's they got the similar style of wrestling a sim, similar style of fans and the same target audience. So at the end of the day, you know, you're, if you if you are looking for the competition, if you're looking for the we're going at WWE, if you're having problems fighting NXT, you're gonna have problems with Raw and SmackDown, even bigger problems because Raw and SmackDown out out, draw, out views NXT every week. And the two, I think the one or two battles they've had has been really close with numbers. So. Of course, they're doing it on purpose at this point. At first, it was kind of like, well, maybe that was a coincidence. Now, it's, it's, it's obvious, you know, that they're trying to compete in NXT with AEW. And like I said, man, it's, it's a great time to be alive and to see it all come together. I think it's going to be awesome. And the fact that we're able to not only be there in attendance, you know, and be able to bring you some of this content, you know, is going to be awesome. But for me, man, the whole – it's like Tony said – to me, there's no mistake at this point. Like, it's clearly they're doing it on purpose. Yeah, of course. I mean, like, not that anybody ever thought they weren't in the first place. But uh, for me, man, I think to AEW's credit, they've said from jump that they weren't trying to defeat WWE. They said the whole time, and they've said even now that they want to be, you know, the alternative. They want to be, you know, the what's different. And that seems to be the same thing that they're echoing now. Um, for me, I, I think if they stay in that lane, it's cool. But I think, I think AEW knows they're not going to overtake WWE as a whole. And, you know, it's funny because Kev is show what Kev is showing me for those of you who are watching on the Facebook live, um, and my hat, and my hat. <laughs> Kev showing me a tweet from the young bucks saying that they aren't scared about NXT coming to, uh, Wednesday's. I don't think they got anything to be scared about. I think that that well, no. I think uh, I think what Tony said is spot on in that sense. In that, I don't think it's anything to be worried about. If it's just them versus NXT, I think that that's a, a fair war, and I think that that could do well. I don't. I think for anybody that thinks that they're going to overtake WWE, I mean, it's it's just good for fans to have a choices, uh, have the alternative. Like, oh, okay, you don't want for those who still watch Impact. Fans have always had an alternative, but a lot of times it wasn't. Yeah, it, was, it, it wasn't always available for everybody to watch. Right, but you've got. You said for those well, who still you, watch those, Impact, those, I mean, you, Impact you, has gotten. Yeah, but, 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 but thing is, a lot of people don't even watch Impact because Impact doesn't have a TV channel that everybody has. Everybody can get Twitch though. They could, but do they? <laughs> <laughs> That's fair, but Every, I, everybody got YouTube. I mean that too. I mean, and they tons and, of wrestling content on YouTube. Shit. Plus, yeah. Impact is like posting like the old TNA pay per views. I'm like, dude, that alone is fun to watch. Well, well that's that's Pluto TV show all day long. I heard Impact been killing it lately. They have, dude. Like, 
Just like like their story, their storylines are a hundred times better, in my opinion. Uh, I love what they're doing with Jessica Havoc and Father James Mitchell. Um, so I didn't know he was back. Yeah, dude, he's with. Uh, it's him and uh, Havoc, and uh, I think Sue Young's with him. Should have been Rosemary. <laughs> So yeah, dude. I mean, they they're definitely coming up, man. There's more people going there. Brian Cage, being their world champ and all that, man. I mean, you couldn't really pick much better a guy to be, you know, your world champ. You got Johnny Mundo. You got uh, he gone right. Mundo gone. He left. They in got there? so basically they got they got Lucha Underground there, and uh... <laughs> you know you're right though because they do bring a lot of guys from AAA in too. <laughs> So what what do you think about that? Do you think uh, what do you think about partnerships? Yeah, what do you think about the partnerships that AEW is trying to put together? I mean, they've already announced one with uh, AAA and uh, AEOEW and OWE. O-W-E yeah, O-W-E, yeah. You know, I th- to me, I think that shit's smart. I'm surprised Ring of Honor and NWA already dropped. Uh, I to me. I think them partnering up is the best thing they can do because it's the only chance they got to really make an, a, any type of dent against WWE. Tony, what I'm, do you think? I'm a fan. I'm I'm a fan of the partnership. I've I've always, you know, liked the cross brand, and even when they do it within the WWE themselves, with you know, uh, Survivor Series, you know, this one of my favorite times where you get to cross brand things. Back in the '90s. When the WWF went to New Japan and All Japan, WCW did the same thing. You know, those were some of the best matches and best times, you know, for wrestling fans. Uh, I want to personally WWE do something with New Japan again. Uh, That'll be dope, you know, maybe incorporating the great mood into the Hall of Fame WWE, you know, knowing that he's about to retire soon. Like, you know, um, I love it. I'm a a big fan of it. Even if you have those type of uh, promotions where they say, oh, you know, we're in this town and, 20 miles up the road, this promotion is doing a show next Saturday. They're going to have a showcase match tonight. Come and check out some of their talent. You know, that kind of stuff is just, you know, helping hands, helping each other get to the top. And the more wrestling, the better for wrestling fans. And, you know, what's wrong with that? Yes. I would love to see that with New Japan just because I'm not old enough to be around back when they used to do, like, the Japan, you know, merging shows, merge and, shows and stuff like yeah. that. So I would like to see that. Um, I don't know that you see that with Japan at this point, especially now that you got the whole AEW deal. But I mean, even at that, AEW is not connected with New Japan either. Yeah. So I mean, well, I mean, New Japan still got the thing with Ring of Honor, and I don't know if the WWE is like kind of staying away from it because of that, or like maybe they have a deal where they can't work with other promotions. I don't know the deals of New Japan and Ring of Honor, but New Japan is basically the WWE of the Western Hemisphere. Agreed. So. Yeah. You know, it's, it's it's huge. You know, it, it like I said, you know, Vince has worked with New Japan and All Japan in the 90s before, you know, with the Hogan versus Muda thing and Hogan teaming up with Muda. You know, it's, it's, it, it was it was a dope thing. You know, I don't know the terms and all the legal crap that's preventing it or what, but I would love to see that, man. You know, there's a lot of dream matches that could happen with, you know, WWE versus New Japan. Like, oh, that would man. be... Talking about <laughs> Ring of Honor, man... Um... Stay tuned. You could be seeing some Ring of Honor stuff coming real soon next week. We've got Ring of Honor coming here uh, to Dearborn. Uh, what are your thoughts on Ring of Honor lately, man? Uh, the homie uh, Shane Taylor is uh, making yeah. quite the impact over mm-hmm. there. Yo, man, he's been killing it. If you haven't been watching the the Shane Taylor show, man, the the the, the, the Cleveland Brown beat down himself. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the Cleveland Brown beatdown. I just made that up right now. Copy, um, copy, copy right that. <laughs> yeah, I made that up just now, and he, he probably hates it. But uh, I'll be seeing him next Friday, man. You know, um, he can, he can. So will we? We can so scrap we. then. You know, we can fight then. You know, it's whatever. You know, but <laughs> but no, man. Shout out to Shane Taylor, man. Um, Shane showed uh, mad love to the show he too. A couple man, times so. guest of our show, he came on. Uh, two or three times, you know, before champ and as champ. You know, he's been holding on to that title, making it something good, having great matches with it. As much shit as people talk online about him, when they see him in person, you know, it's a different story. So. He's the baddest you've ever seen. But uh, it's getting to be about there that time. They're telling us we got to go home. Tony, let them know where they can it's find you. It's not Zay, it's Randy. <laughs> Tony Thunder everywhere, Facebook, 
Twitter, Instagram, Tony Thunder. Love your mother. Fuck your couch. Kick you in the dick. Dang, all, all the same at one time, huh? I know. I'm not allowed to have nothing no more. <laughs> You're a liar and you don't love Jesus. You got it there all. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Kev, what about you? Oh, uh, man. On Facebook, <laughs> on Facebook, Kevin D. Russ. On Instagram and Twitter, underscore, underscore, May in the 80s. Yes, my mother does love me. <laughs> Boom. And make sure, like we said, make sure you're following the show on all of our social medias at KO3C Pod on Twitter and Instagram. Get you a house. Get you a house from Stransky and Company Realty. You've got, uh, and make sure you're following the Knockouts and Three Counts YouTube. Go subscribe to that joint because that's where all of our content's going to be coming once we go to StarCast. Like I mentioned, we've already got the interview set up with the Wrestling with Stereotypes panel. We're going to have the guys Andreas and Hale, uh, Andreas and Kel on with us. Excuse me, boys. And uh, Ariel, Ariel Monroe, uh, Big Swole. Yeah. So. We're going to do that. We're going to get that done. You got Scorpio Sky is going to be on there too. Maybe we'll be bringing him. We've got access to Punk, Moxley, all that. Pay attention. So uh, check us out, ko3cpod.com. I'm at Detroit Knockout on Twitter and Instagram. And uh, peace, motherfuckers. Peace.